We've had the unique experience of living for six months in both Curacao and Aruba separately. So we've got a unique position we're gonna share with you and that is comparing the beaches between the two countries. We're Air and Lori. We have seven points of comparability based on our experience. The first one would be accessibility, getting to the beaches in both Aruba and Curacao. In the resort area of Aruba, you could often walk right up to the beach from street level. They're usually on the same level as the road, making them very accessible and easy to get to. If you have a private vehicle, you could often park not too far of a distance away and just walk right to the beach and ocean. We love that. We just parked our little car right on the edge went into the trunk, grabbed our towels and whatnot, and it was like 20, 20 meters to our, to our favorite beach spot. Whereas in Curacao, we generally encountered more barriers of some sort or another to get to the beach. Either we had to go through some resort, we had to pass through a restaurant, a development of some kind, or stairs and whatnot to get up or down from the, from the beaches. In Curacao, generally speaking, the beaches were at a farther distance. I mean, it's a larger island than Aruba, so naturally you'd have to drive farther. And once we got there, we found that because of geography, they were a little bit harder to access. Oftentimes, the beaches were down below a cliff and it would require you to walk down and then up the stairs at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. Hey, if you're getting value from this video, now's a great time to press the like button. How about walkability? Aruba had unobstructed walkability. If a person wanted to, you could walk from Surfside basically all the way up to Arashi. Compared to Curacao, where there are many more obstacles to do that same walk, be it geography or gates, uh, mm -hmm. lounge chairs right up to the water, fences, buildings, and even sometimes guards keeping you from accessing the beach. Not on all beaches, but we did encounter that on Curacao, whereas in Aruba, we didn't encounter that at all. Right. There are many beaches on Curacao you can access. Easy peasy. Large sections of Curacao are so developed and built up that you've got a combination of buildings, restaurants, resorts built right to the waterline. So mm -hmm. that same walk that you're easy to do in Aruba, you'd find it very difficult to get any headway or any, any progress if you try to do the same walk in Curacao. Mm -hmm. On a positive note, the rugged terrain and isolation of some of the beaches in Curacao make for a very serene experience. And once you're there, you're often tucked away on a secluded beach that's very beautiful and there's just a few people on it with you. Curacao has many beautiful beaches. And insider's tip, Aruba does have a few of these isolated beaches also. Sand quality. In our experience, Aruba had more of that fine white powdery sand than Curacao did. Mm -hmm. Both countries are probably paying for and importing resort quality sand to cater to their tourists. It just in our experience, Aruba had a lot longer, more continuous section of resort areas and therefore that powdery sand that you love. Mm -hmm. I would say that Aruba is even more tourist based than Curacao mm -hmm. and as a result, they have a much larger resort area and much more of that white powdery sand for a longer distance than Curacao does. Mm -hmm. Aruba's resort area stretches as far as the eye can see, whereas compared to Curacao, there might be one to three uh, pocket resort areas that would sport that kind of sand. In the non-resort areas, Aruba did have a more natural, like more beige and a coarser sand um, throughout those types of beaches. Mm -hmm. And Aruba again had a handful of those for sure. Cur Curacao on the other hand had a lot of those especially as you drive up to the north and west side of the island. Curacao was all about the more natural pocket kind of beaches with that more natural seashelly, coarser beige kind of sand. Right. It had numerous beaches like that, Curacao did. Let's talk about wind. We often get asked in Aruba, was it windy on the beach? And the straight answer is, yeah, yes. it was really windy on the beach. Oftentimes during our beach days, we were picking sand out of our teeth, literally. Many times the wind was so strong, you'd, you'd literally have to turn away from it. And sometimes locals would show up with like a windbreak uh, or an umbrella that they would prop sideways in the sand mm -hmm. to act as a barrier. And we often envied those things and wish we had them. I don't know why we didn't have one. 
On the other hand, Curacao was just that perfect Caribbean, breezy. We didn't run into any troubles at all with wind in Curacao in any spot that we can recall. That's right. We love water sports. We're going to talk to snorkeling and free diving on both islands. Aruba, in our experience at six months, we entered the water a lot of times and we had a harder time finding really good snorkeling or free diving. We, it was a, quite a distance to get to the edge of the reef to do any diving and it was either murky or cloudy or bleached coral. It, the snorkeling just wasn't um, the best on Aruba for us. A general lack of sea life even if you could find a good spot which was difficult. Mm -hmm. Comparing that to Curacao, Curacao had many secluded sheltered bays yeah. uh, with fairly rapid drop-offs and it was a much better experience for us, much better accessibility to very good above average I would say snorkeling and free diving where we saw a good portion of yeah. underwater life when we were there. Everything from turtles, large fish, we even saw huge snook and big schools of fish that would just surround us and move with us. It was beautiful in Curacao. One question we get asked maybe the most or that generated a lot of uh, dialogue from another video we did is costs to access the beach. This is based on our experience again, but in Aruba, all of the beaches were absolutely free. There were no guards, entrance fee, maintenance fee, garbage fees or of any kind. All of the beaches in Aruba are public and free for everyone to enjoy. Compare that to Curacao, Curacao still has the vast majority of their beaches for free, just yes. like Aruba does. However, the difference is, and it's important because that's what the video is about, <laughs> comparing Aruba to Curacao, Curacao has a select few beaches that are so developed, they also want to privatize them and ask for money for you to access and enjoy the beach. Mm -hmm. So there was a few instances of that in our experience in Curacao, whereas there was none of that in Aruba. We were a little surprised and it's okay for them to charge if they paid for the development of that area. We were told it would go to cleanliness or maintenance, but it was just a bit of a surprise that there were paid beaches in Curacao, whereas in Aruba there are none that we discovered. That's right. On the, on the theme of a little bit in Curacao and none in Aruba, let's talk about toplessness. There might be families out there watching this video where you'd like to sort of keep that out of your experience. On the flip side, there might be some of you that like that sort of thing. So just wanted to relate to our experience where in Curacao, we would see probably 5% of the women going topless. It was infrequent, but yeah. it happened. Yeah. From what I've heard, obviously I would look away. <laughs> but in, in Aruba, there was absolutely none of that. In our entire six months, we didn't see that one time. So take that point and use it for what you may. Yep. In either instance, you're gonna enjoy both islands. We recommend them both. Yeah, it's a tropical paradise, you can't go wrong. My name's Air. I'm Lori. Bye. <laughs> we encourage you to watch this video next.